Hi guys, welcome back to Make That Sea Change. It's Paul here again with you. Today we're going to look at something that can be quite helpful in all of your workings within the affiliate marketing or online business, which is how to research competitors' websites for your own benefit. So we spend a lot of time in the affiliate marketing game. We spend a lot of time doing posts. We spend a lot of time building content, writing content, researching content. And quite often, as you and something that this is what first brought this to my mind is, you know, I do research for the content I want to write about, and I kept you, you notice the same pages at the top of the rankings all the time. And for those of you who are new to this this sort of business, um, go back into my into my site and read a newbie's guide to affiliate marketing, which will answer a lot of your questions and have a look at website SEO, but. As I'm doing my research and I find these, these sites at, at the top of the search engines, and again, for those who are new to the business, if you, the, the trick is to get your, your posts and your site to be, to be able to be found in search engines. People search for a problem, you have a, a post that you've written to solve a particular problem, and if it ranks well in Google or in Bing, then people find your site and they read your site and off they go. So. As I'm doing my research, I quite, you quite often find competitor websites because you're searching for information in your own niche most times that are always on page one. So to my way of thinking, why reinvent the wheel? Why not learn from what they're doing, mirror on what they do that works well, see if there's any gaps that, they, that, that they're not hitting that you might be able to hit. Use it to refocus on your audience, refocus on who you're targeting, refocus on how you're doing things to give yourself the best opportunity for, of the success that, they, that these people are having as well. Now I will say, and it is in the post that this video is in, we are looking at copying strategies, processes, uh, what else have I written here? Keywords, social media management, etc. We're not copying and pasting their content into our sites. A, it's unethical. B, you'll get smashed by the search engines because they'll identify that as duplicate content. They'll know the other site had the information there first. They'll know you copied and pasted onto your own site and they won't rank you. So you're wasting your time. So do not copy their content, copy their strategies, copy how they do it, what they do, who they're targeting. And you're halfway there. Don't reinvent the wheel. As I keep saying, if you can, if you can get what they're getting, why not, why not do it? And the other side of the fence is they, they may have had they may have hired people to do all this research for them. Why not jump on those tail, on those coattails and get that information for yourself? So what we're going to look at today then is we're going to look at how we can look at their content, how we can use ranking tools, how we can look at their keywords, use Google Alerts, look at our social media, and then that'll be it. That's the conclusion. So let's start with content. So as you start to find these sites, the first things you look at, you need to look at is their content that they're, that they're writing. So who are they writing it for? Is there, can you see a specific target audience that they're writing for? And if you can see that, is it the same target audience that you're writing for? What is their writing style? Are they writing formally? Are they writing humorously? Are they writing you know, informatively or just casual writing? My, I try to write casually in my writing style. And most of the people that I view in my niche and in, and you know in the making money online niche tend to write in that style. But you know if it's if you're writing differently than them, maybe it's your writing style that's not attracting that type of audience to come in. Um, how long are their posts? Are they long and informative? And you, if you're writing news sites or if you're working in um, writing about medical issues, mental health issues, those sort of things, you might need long informative posts because people want deep information. If you're writing about the best football jersey to wear it on the Super Bowl, you don't need 400 pages on what a football jersey is made out of. You just need short, sharp details providing the solution to the problem they've got. Um, what sort of posts do they write? Do they write a lot of use lists? So 10 uses. If you look at essential oil sites, for example, most of those sites, you know, 10 uses for rosemary essential oil, 10 uses for lemon essential oil, how, you know, eight benefits of using essential oils to sleep, that sort of stuff. So they use useless type things. Um, making money online is a lot of reviews. If you're in the hi-fi or televisions, you know, you might be reviewing a lot of televisions. Um, if you are, um, I write how-to posts. 
And if you're doing a lot of fish, say doing fishing, it might be how to catch this fish, how to catch that fish, how to do this. So it depends on the type of post that they're writing that you, you'd want to look at to make sure that you're on the same path. Because if they're writing all those posts and their, their site is successful and popular, obviously they're the type of post that, that the audience is looking for. And then is there anything else that they use that sticks out to you? Do they use a lot of videos? Do they use a lot of um, tables or pictures or are their pictures natural, you know, pictures of them doing things? If it's a fishing thing, it might be me holding up a fish, you know, those sort of things. Is it, look at what else they're using that must be popular because they're attracting audience to their, to their site. So think of their content. Focus on, on the differences between your site and their site. Doesn't mean you have to mirror everything they do. You might look at your site and say, yep, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm on the right track, because you'd be doing, you, you're obviously doing your own analytics and making, seeing what posts of yours are popular, seeing what's uh, ranking within your own site. So it's made, it could just be a comparison. You not, won't necessarily mirror everything they do, but it's a good idea to have an idea of what they're looking at. Next one then is ranking tools. Now ranking tools, in the post I've looked at similar web, I use Jaxi a lot. Uh, there's also one, uh, a Neil Patel free one called Uber Suggest, which I really like and I use quite a bit. What ranking tools will do is if you can plug in any URL you like into these tools and they will tell, these tools will come back and tell you what keywords are theirs that are ranking the, that are the most popular, uh, what posts they've got that are ranking the most popular, or what SimilarWeb and Uber Suggest both do is you can actually just type in a niche and it'll bring up the most popular posts in that niche. So it's also a good way to find competitors if your search engine results aren't necessarily always finding that for you. So if your niche is, I don't know, scrapbooking, you might type scrapbooking and you'll see all the latest posts that have come up in scrap, the most popular latest posts that have come up for scrapbooking, which means you can then click on them and then go back and look at their content or do some of the other stuff we talked about below, you know, look at their keywords and that sort of stuff. So have a look at these, these ranking tools. They're quite good. They're all different and they all don't provide the same information and some of them are free and some of them cost. I would start with the Neil Patel Uber Suggest, as I say, I like similar web as well. It's a little bit expensive, but it, it lets you compare two or three sites. So if you're seeing a couple of sites coming, you can actually compare and you can see which one's getting a lot of the market, which ones are ranking high for different keywords and so on. So they all have different functionality, but they're very good tools to look at. Which takes us to keywords. Now, keywords, I want, and I've said this in the post, I wanted to do this separately because the ranking tools are great. <coughs> Excuse me. The ranking tools are great, and they will show you um, the statistics. But I also want you to go in and have a look and see how their keywords are actually really being used. Now, in all the training I've done with them, Wealthy Affiliate, we are taught to do, put our keywords in the title, we are ta taught to put our keywords in the first paragraph, and maybe let them put them into a heading somewhere along the lines as well. Now the keywords we search for, we like, I like to make sure that I have over 80 searches a month, 80 to 100 searches a month. I like to make sure that there's um, under 100 people with the same keywords on their site. And then I use Jaxi and it has a a QSR, a QSR rating, which anything in the 90s to 100 is, is what I'm looking for there. So I look at my keywords and I, and I use them in, that, in the manner I've just described. But have a look and see how they're using their keywords. So go to their title and just look and you, as you get more experience with it, you, you can pick out the keywords in their title usually quite quickly, put them into a keyword tool, see what See what they're using as far as what their thresholds are for the keywords that they choose. So what, how many searches per month, how much, what's the, the ranking. Uh, the Uber suggests uses a percentage ranking rather than a, which is effective what a QSR is. So it says you will have 90% chance of going on page one with these keywords, etc. So have a look and see if there's any thresholds that they, that they have. So if they're not choosing keywords under particular thresholds, maybe that's something that you need to read you know, change what you've been thinking moving forward from there as well. Have a look at how they use the keywords. Do they use them in the title, the first paragraph and a heading? Do they only use them in the title? Do they use them in every paragraph? Search engines don't like keyword stacking, so they don't like keywords in every second 
sentence or every paragraph, but have a look and see what they're doing. Um, have a look at what other variants they use. Now, this is something that um, I've had some discussions with people about. I know there's very different opinions on it. I like in my posts to just do some variants. So the keywords for this one, where did I write that in here? So I'm not, um, how to research competitors are my keywords in this, in this post. So you can go away and have a look in your, in your ranking tools if you like and see whether I've chosen good keywords or not. Comment below if you don't think I have. Um, I like to throw in a few variants. So in somewhere within the, in the post, I would say, okay, if you are researching competitors, or if you're doing competitor research, those keywords might not be the best that you choose as your main keywords, and by absolutely focus on main keywords in your heading, first paragraph, maybe a title, as I've said. These variants, you just throw in every now and then in natural sentencing. Because what I have seen with some of these sites is when you do the searches, like if I search for how to research competitors' websites, and then you might see that research competitors comes up on people who rank quite high, even though that's not their exact keyword. So have a look at how they use their variants. Can you see those words littered throughout or are they not doing that? Um, some people don't think that that's really worthwhile and some people do. I like to do it. I haven't seen, you know, I'm not sitting here saying, well, I do it and I get ranking for everything. It, it, it's something that I believe your website has to become a bit more mature before it starts to pick those up. Again, other people don't believe that, but it's something to look at and see what they're using. So with the keywords, see what the keywords are, see what the their stats are, but then go a bit more natural with you. And this is why I've separated this. Go in and have a look yourself on where they're using them, what if they're varying them, how they're using them within their actual posts. And then the last thing you do for the keywords, one thing I do often is say, for example, I want to write a post on, and I did it with this one, to be honest, because I kept saying competitor research or spying on competitors and things like that. And I couldn't get the keywords to be on the, on the statistics that one of they either had no monthly searches or there was a lot of competition on them. The QSR wasn't there. So I do a, a quick Google search and see how other people write them. Every now and then it just gives you an idea on how to write, add your keywords into a, a sense because one thing the search engines do like is they must appear naturally. Um, I did it one for the other day and I cannot remember the words, but it was something that when you look at keywords had great targets, great monthly searches and not a lot of competition, but it wasn't something that naturally flowed. So I plugged those three words into um, Google and all of a sudden there was two or three sentences there that had those keywords in. I thought, ah, it just gave me those ideas and it was those sites again that do it. So. Use your competitors to see how to put your keywords in your in your titles. It's it's a great way to do it. I do it a lot, and it and it really helps me with better keywords than what I had. Now the fourth way you can do it is set up Google Alerts. If you go to the post below in the Google Alerts, the very first word I've I've um, linked off to Google Alerts. What you do is once you get in there, you set you put either in a niche or a keyword or whatever. It will come up and show you all the latest pages that have those keywords in and then you set up emails. So every day you'll get an email or every two days or whenever you set it, you'll get an email from Google saying, okay, here's all the posts that are in within this niche today. I have one for affiliate marketing. So every day I get, the, and there's an example in the post, I get an affiliate marketing email. Most of it's junk, like there's obscure news sites and there's obscure scientific data. Amazon might have released a change in their terms and conditions, which will have the words affiliate marketing in it. Um, so a lot of it you don't read, but at least once a day, there's a post in there that is from a very high ranking website. It gives me ideas for my next post because if it's in there, it means it's something that's trending. If there's two or three posts, it means it's something that's hot right now. So get in and do a post on it, get in on that action. Um, it'll give you ideas for keywords, ideas for what they're writing, and it just highlights new sites you can go and check out. Uh, Russell Brunson calls it funnel hacking, I, you know, where you go in and read, go through funnels and have a look and see what they're, what they're doing. This is exactly the same thing, you're just website hacking, seeing what they're writing, how they're writing it, where they're putting their links, all sorts of things like that. And finally, and last but not least, and obviously social media get on their social media sites, see what they're doing on social media. Are they promoting their posts? Are they writing extra bits? How are they writing? And this goes back to the content that we mentioned earlier. 
how are they writing their social media? So are they using just off the cuff, hey guys, check this out, or are they doing live video? Are they doing, um, are they interacting a lot with their, with their followers? And if so, how are they getting that? What platforms are they using? You might not be using the same platforms they are, and they might be driving a lot of traffic from, their, from those platforms. Some of the ranking tools will actually show you, some of the ones you pay for will actually show you, let you get in and see where their, their traffic's coming from. And if you see a lot of Pinterest, a lot of Facebook, a lot of Instagram, you know that their, their social media is really working well. So go and look at their social media, see what they're doing. And the beauty of social media is you can actually get on and follow them. So your social media feeds, like Google Alerts, will get that information. I know some people actually get on and they don't spruik their own website. That'll that's just will get you blacklisted everywhere. But what they do, they get on and they interact and they ask questions to the other followers. Hey guys, what do you think of this? And they're getting information ethically from the followers of their competition because people are just discussing it. Their competition's getting the the kudos from that because they're the interaction on their social media sites and their website helps them with their rankings and their, you know, coming up on that all important Facebook feed. But you're also getting information out of it. So that's something you can try as well. You don't get on to say, hi, I'm Paul, I've got to make that seat change come to my site instead. No, no, no. But you can, I haven't, I don't get on and do it, I don't have time, but I do know people do it and it's actually a really good way to get information out of your, out of their followers about what they want to hear about. Ask questions, what do you think of this? And you'll get information. Ask a question of the, the site owner, what do you think of this? Um, there's another theory on backlinks where you can go in and speak to site owners and ask to swap. I haven't talked about that in here, but that is something that we can, we'll talk about another time. Okay, there you go. There's five ways that you can research your competitors. So look at their content, get into ranking tools, see how they're ranking, see what is popular, working well for them, what is not working well for them get in their keywords, have a look at their Google, get in, set up some Google Alerts so you're getting information in daily and check out their social media. Check out your competition, see what's working well for them, see what's not working well for them because I guarantee you, if they're doing it, it's working. Why reinvent the wheel? Why spend months and months researching on stuff that you can get right now because people have done it before you and they know what's working, use it. Okay guys, thanks for that, I hope that was helpful. As usual, please subscribe below, please click on the like, little like thumbs up on the channel. Any comments, any questions, please don't be afraid to comment and ask questions either below on the video or below on the post. And I will chat to you guys soon. Thanks guys, bye.